Hey everyone, I'm Jack Fawcett, and today I want to share with you my favorite and most faithful amplifier, the Fender 59 Tweed Basement. Mine is a first generation reissue from 1990 with a tube rectifier. We're going to talk a little bit about the Fender Basement, some of the great tones you can get out of it, a little bit about the history of it, and why I would consider this the greatest amp of all time. The Tom Brady of amplifiers. The Michael Jordan of amplifiers. The Albus Dumbledore of amplifiers. This is Isildur's heir and heir to the throne of Gondor. The Jimi Hendrix of amplifiers. We're going to talk more about that coming up. We're going to start off with some tones here. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I am going to turn this amp all the way up. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Follow the links below where you can listen to some music and follow me on Spotify. I hope you enjoy. So the Fender Basement, the Tweed 410 Fender Basement is, in my opinion, the greatest amplifier of all time. Now, of course, everyone has a difference of opinion. Feel free to leave in the comments what you think the greatest amplifier of all time is, as long as you know that if it's not the 59 Basement, then you're wrong. There are other great iterations of the Basement. The Basement does have a long history in various models, and other Basement models were excellent as well. In fact, uh, other basement models were used by countless artists, including one very notable user of Mr. Brian Setzer. 
The interesting thing about the Fender Bassman is there are actually fewer notable artists and notable recordings, and a lot of it is sort of lost in legend. If you can believe this, a lot of the techs of the day, of the classic recordings, didn't necessarily think that 50 plus years later, there would be legions of nerd guitarists with baby televisions in their pockets getting into internet debates over what amplifiers people use in recordings. I can't believe they didn't have that foresight either. That being said, there the bassman has been in loads of studios and has been at least attributed and very, very strongly hinted at being used by countless artists, including Stevie Ray Vaughan, The Beatles, The Who, and very, very famously, quite possibly even getting up to the probably territory by Jimi Hendrix for both Voodoo Child and possibly Voodoo Child's Slight Return, as well as some of his other recordings. Now, there are some other kind of Fender amps that are thrown in the mix there, which does sort of bring up the debate about how much is tone in your fingers, how much is tone just cumulative, uh, how much do we debate these silly things when the reality is, is it doesn't matter that much. But we're not going to talk about all that stuff because that's more practical and we want to talk about cool gear today. We're going to talk about the basement and what makes the basement special. Now, the basement originally started out as a bass amp and it is worth noting that it sounds great when you play bass through it. But it pretty quickly got picked up by guitar players because of its rich, clean touch sensitivity and the way that it breaks up differently. So with some of the history of this amplifier kind of shrouded in legend, why would it boast such a great title of Holy Grail? And I'm not the only one who says this. If you look it up, when you talk about the Fender Bassman, you're going to see a lot of stuff out there about how this is one of the pinnacle amplifiers in the history of guitar. And the reason for it is not just how great an amplifier it is on its own, how it has beautiful, rich, responsive cleans and an incredibly powerful, thick sustain and, and an overdrive like one that you've never heard before that sort of defies the space-time continuum. There is one other distinct reason that this amplifier is notable as one of the greatest of all times. If you were to look at the history of amplifiers and where amplifiers come from, as far as what their inspiration is, where they were born out of, how this all happens. If you were to look at an amplifier lineage or a, or a genealogy, if you were to visit ampcestry.com. <laughs> There is one very, very notable thing about the Fender Bassman, and that is that a certain Jim Marshall used the 410 Tweed Fender Bassman as his primary inspiration and the platform of which he designed his first prototypes out of. So from the Fender Bassman comes the entire Jim Marshall amplifier line. The Fender Bassman has always had that connection with Marshall, and tonally, the way that it sits, it has all of the Fender character that you want, but it has a richer and a more aggressive drive that kind of gets into the realm of the Marshall territory. Now, one of the other amplifiers in this Fender line that is always been associated with the Bassman because they're so close together is the Tweed Twin. Another famous notable user of that one was Eric Clapton, who switched over to using the Tweed Twins because he said they sounded like the Marshalls, but they were more reliable. Any Tweed Twin you got sounded like a Tweed Twin, whereas Marshalls at that time were a little bit more, you know, each one was a little bit different. The Fenders had kind of more of a standard sound based on the amplifier. So there was some correlation between Fender Tweed amps in general and Marshall at that time. And you'll notice in the drive of this amplifier, again, as I mentioned, it, it, it has the Fender character and the Fender sound that you want, but it's different than like a blackface Fender amp. It, it doesn't have quite the same smoothness, the same overdrive. It has a, a fatter, deeper kind of distortion that you get when you open this amplifier up. Now, that being said, 
One of the reasons why this was picked up by guitarists in the first place was because of its beautiful tone, its touch sensitivity, its rich cleans, as well as its overdrive. And that brings me to how I like to use this amplifier. The best way to use this amplifier, in my opinion, is actually going straight into the normal channel. A lot of players will talk about jumping the channels, and I do think that's a usable tone, but I have achieved some of the greatest tones of my life, both live and in recording, plugging into the number one input of the normal channel, I run the treble at 7, I run the bass and the presence at 5, and I run the mids full on. That's how I use this amplifier. I don't change it. I use it that way for every guitar, for every pedal that I plug into it, and it just sounds perfect to me when you plug it in that way. So we're gonna talk tone a little bit here. We're gonna get back to some tone in just a minute. Now at the beginning, what you heard was me playing it in kind of the, the vein that I like to play it in, just, just that same style. The Gibson ES-335 going into it. I've recorded a song called Highway Songs that had that exact tone on it. You can check out Highway Songs right here. I have achieved just so many tones that I've absolutely fallen in love with plugging a guitar right into the basement and running it clean and it just sounds great it has its own tone and yet at the same time it brings out the beautiful character and richness of each of the guitars that you're playing i have yet to find a guitar that does not sound amazing through this amplifier that doesn't sound like the guitar is supposed to sound i mentioned at the end of the video we are going to turn it all the way up however you get kind of a smoother uh, edge of breakup and, and kind of lightly overdriven tone if you don't turn it all the way up, but if you get it kind of pushed a little bit. So you saw in that other clip of the Stratocaster, the volume was turned up to about seven. And at that point, it is starting to get some pretty rich breakup and you're not just running it clean. Now, it's worth noting that even at that volume, you're pretty well beyond live performance volume. The two contexts in which you can get this amp to overdrive on its own would be if you're using it in the studio and you've got somebody who doesn't mind, you know, if you can get it in a booth or if you have somebody who doesn't mind recording amps at high volumes, or if you're playing really, really big stages and you have a sound guy that absolutely loves your amp. Those are the times when you'd be able to get the amp to drive on its own. So I do think that this amp works best as a pedal platform, and I have never heard an amplifier that I think is a better pedal platform than this amp. I know that there's all the great talk and everything about how amazing the Fender Bassman breaks up and all, but the fact of the matter is, is it breaks up pretty raucously loud. So for the most part, for most practical players of the Fender Bassman, you're going to get your best tones using it as a pedal platform. So I'm going to show you several pedals in this video, some that you might not expect, but some that have been some of my favorites to use with this for both performing and recording. So we've just been talking about the clean tones. Now, I did also mention I like going into the normal channel. A lot of players will jump the channels. That's a very common thing to do. I don't jump the channels. I found that it's just not worth it for me. I think I don't need the extra brightness that it adds. I think it has this sort of rich silkiness to it when you plug into the normal channel and the brightness can add a little bit of brashness in its own way. I do not at all like plugging into the bright channel, just right into the bright channel. It's way too much in my opinion. That's actually not that atypical of a lot of Fender amps. You'd have to be playing a, a really, really dark, muddy sounding guitar to plug into the bright channel. However, if you are playing it wildly overdriven and really, really pushing it, jumping the channels can help at that point because it adds in a little articulation. So later on, I'm going to turn it all the way up. Now with the Telecaster, I am going to plug straight into the normal channel, but with the Les Paul, I'm also going to have it all the way up and jump the channels for that clip so you can hear how it sounds with the channels jumped. That being said, I like it best on the normal channel, just going right in and it just sounds great. It just sounds the way that a guitar should sound. So let's get back to some tones here. I'm going to play a little bit more, some stuff inspired by things that I have written and recorded with this exact amplifier. And again, I mentioned it takes pedals really, really well. So we're going to use a couple of different pedals just to add some ambiance here. I'm going to start with a clip with the Stratocaster, which was inspired by a song that I wrote called Catherine Recorded into this amplifier. And then I'm going to do something with the Telecaster with a little bit of slapback delay courtesy of Achille Echoes. And just show you with, with the depth of sound, it just absolutely loves echo and reverb and it loves drives which we'll get to in a minute. Now, it also just loves clean, and again, it makes any guitar sound like a guitar should sound, brings out that kind of sultry, jazzy side of a Les Paul. So we're gonna hear several different clean tones here with the Stratocaster, the Telecaster, and the Les Paul before we get any further.
All right, now we're going to get to some pedals. Again, I mentioned this is just an absolutely amazing pedal platform. I've never heard a drive or a guitar that I didn't think sounded good into this amplifier. There are a few pedals that I love into this amplifier that you might not expect. So here's the first one. One of my very favorite pedal pairings, and this is this kind of gives me an odd Eric Clapton moment, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second, is to use an MXR Distortion 3 into this amp. I bet a lot of you didn't think I was going to say that. MXR Distortion 3 is a really cool pedal that's really not a distortion. It's really much more of an overdrive. This was one of the one of the first overdrive pedals that I ever had. And plugging a Stratocaster into the basement with that pedal just gives me something that I, I'm not going to say like it nails a Clapton tone, but it gives me something that just puts me in a Clapton frame of mind. So I'm going to play two clips here using Stratocaster and the ES-335 going for kind of a, a not late 90s, early 2000s sort of Clapton-inspired tone using that setup. With a Telecaster, and I also found this sound works great with the Gibson Firebird, one of my favorite pedals to use with this is a Keeley Red Dirt, which is inspired by a Tube Screamer. And on the neck pickup in particular, it just there's something about the way that it, it just fills up the sound that that pedal really, really adds a richness to this amplifier. So now we're going to hear some stuff using the Keeley Red Dirt and the neck pickup of the Telecaster.
Now for a heavier drive tone, another pedal that I've owned for years that I've just absolutely loved is the full tone Plimsoll. And it works amazingly with humbuckers into this amplifier. Now with the name Plimsoll, it immediately made me think of Jeff Beck when I got it and rocked my Plimsoll. And so that was the, the first thing that I ever played with when I got that pedal, which was an anniversary gift from my wife years ago. And I plugged it into the Fender basement and just started playing I Ain't Superstitious from Jeff Beck Truth. And it just it was just amazing. So here it is, the full tone plimsoll into the basement using a Les Paul. <laughs> Right now, for the last part, we are going to get this amp rip-roaring wide open, turned all the way up. I'm going to use the Telecaster and the Les Paul. Again, with the Telecaster, I'm going to go straight into the normal channel, and I'm going to keep that slapback echo on there so that you can hear kind of that, that old-school sort of, uh, you know, very, very old bluesy rock tone. And then with the Les Paul, jumping the channels and just using the amp's natural goodness for that clip. Check out how amazing and rich and powerful Powerful this amp sounds when you get it wide open. Folks, thanks for joining me on this video on the Fender Basement. This is my favorite amplifier. If somebody said you only have one amplifier you could ever play for the rest of your life, what would it be? It would probably be the Fender Basement. I just absolutely love this amp. It has been with me forever. It's an amazing amplifier. One quick kind of funny story about it. When I got it and I got it through trade, it does not have the back plate on it. And I noticed there was a sticker inside that said 5F6 and it looked like a very old sticker so i went hmm so i called fender and i asked them and they said that this might actually be an original fender basement from the 1950s and i was all super super excited and then i popped the back off and sure enough right there it said fender 1990 which is fine because it's still an amazing amplifier 1990 was the first year that the reissues were made the wear on this amplifier is all natural it's about 50 50 about 50 percent uh was the way that i got it and then the other 50 percent wear came from yours truly when i used to use this amp performing and recording all around new england uh, years ago this was my main amp for a very very long time it is still my just it's a very dear amp to me it's my favorite amp i've named this amp old yeller now stays home 
because it's seen its time on the road and it, it's just such a special amp for me that I, I really just keep it for using for recording for doing videos for all of you and I don't know that I'm going to take this one out with me anymore because uh, I'm just just don't want anything to happen to it anymore and it's it's certainly seen its time so let us know what you think of the Fender Basement is this an amp that you use that you want to use that you have used what do you think is the greatest amplifier of all time let us know in the comments please remember to like share and subscribe follow that link below and follow me on Spotify I'm Jack Fawcett thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time